Imagine you're building an application to record temperature measurements for monitoring purposes. You want to use Redis for this because it's fast, and you'll need to access the data very frequently. You may think to store each measurement embedded in a JSON document with the timestamp and temperature reading. While this approach seems reasonable, it can cause issues as your application scales to have tons of these measurements. A better approach is to use the time series capabilities of Redis Stack. With Redis Stack, you can store your measurements in a time series data structure. You can also easily calculate aggregate queries, such as getting the average temperature over a period of time. Let's see what this looks like in code. Here, I'm importing some sample data that contains timestamps and associated temperature measurements. In Redis Stack, you need to first create a time series before you can add measurements to it. However, you want to make sure the time series doesn't already exist before you create it. In order to create a new time series, you use the tscreate command. Here, I'm calling our time series temperature raw because it will be storing all the raw temperature measurements from our data. I'm also specifying a duplicate policy of last, meaning if I try to add multiple samples with the same timestamp, it will always keep the newest reported value. Now that you understand how to create a time series, let's see how you start adding values to it. I have an add function here that takes in an array of temperature readings with a timestamp and temperature value. My sample data has years worth of temperature readings every six seconds, totaling about 5.3 million samples. For this reason, I'm splitting the data into chunks of 10,000 samples. I'm using the tsmadd command to store each batch of 10,000 samples. You can use ts.mad to append new values to one or more time series. However, in this case, I'm appending to the same time series, temperature raw. Now let's see what our time series looks like using Redis Insight. In Redis Insight, you can see the temperature raw time series. When you click on the time series, it will show you how many samples there are. In our case, we have 5,256,000 samples. In order to see more details about the time series, you can use the workbench. Given that we have millions of samples, I'm going to avoid returning all of them at the same time. Instead, I'll only query over the last day's worth of samples. I do this using the ts.revrange command and specifying a start time of 0, an end time of plus, and a count of 14,400, which is how many samples we record per day. When you run this query, Redis Insight gives you a graph that you can use to visualize the time series. You can see that our temperature over May 21st hovered between around 50 and 65. You can click and drag your mouse over part of the time series to zoom in. While it's nice to get a full view of all the data, what's also nice is to be able to get the average temperature over a period of time. You can do this using the ts.range command and specifying an aggregate command of AVG for average, as well as a bucket duration. Let's specify a bucket duration of the number of milliseconds in a month so we can see the average monthly temperature in our time series. You can use the ts.range command to get the average temperature over a period of time. However, as you store more measurements, the time it takes to calculate the average will increase. There is a better way to handle all this using the bucket pattern. With the bucket pattern and Redis stack, you can automatically aggregate your data as you go along. Say for example, you want to keep track of the average monthly temperature reading. Redis stack can do this automatically for you with the create rule command. Let's see what this looks like in code. I'm going to add two new time series, one for daily temperature measurements and another for monthly measurements. Then, using the ts.create rule command, I will instruct Redis to automatically keep track of the aggregate temperature readings as they are added to the raw values, and store them in the respective daily or monthly time series. The ts.create rule command takes in a source key, destination key, aggregator function, and bucket duration. The source key is the key of the source time series where you are storing your raw data. In our case, it's temperature raw. The destination key is where you want to store the new bucketed time series. In our case, it's temperature daily and temperature monthly. The aggregator function is the function you want to use for your buckets. In our case, we'll use the AVG to store the average temperature. 
Finally, the bucket duration is the time span in milliseconds for your buckets. For our daily time span, we're using the number of milliseconds in a day. For our monthly time span, we're using the number of milliseconds in a month. Note that you should never explicitly add to the bucketed time series, as it will be done automatically for you. Also, the rule does not apply retroactively to an existing time series. Only new samples that are added to the source time series will be aggregated. Now let's see what this looks like in Redis Insight Workbench. Now if we want to get the average monthly temperature, we can simply query the monthly time series with the ts.range command. Note that you don't have to specify any aggregator function here because it's already done for you using the ts.create rule command. Not only is this command more readable than the aggregate command that we had to run previously, it also runs much faster. Let's go back to our code and run a performance test on each of our time series to see how they perform. Let's compare the performance of some equivalent queries on each of our time series. We want to test the equivalent monthly temperature queries as well as the equivalent daily queries. Note that we can't perform a daily query on the monthly time series because it won't have enough data. For each command, we will log the command as well as how many milliseconds it took. Now let's run the performance test and see the results. As you can see, while Redis Stack is very fast at performing the aggregate queries, using the bucket pattern to keep track of aggregate values as you go is much faster. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see and you want to hear more, please like this video, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Also, be sure to check the description down below for a link to sign up to Redis Enterprise Cloud for free.